Okay, so here's some of the key ingredients. Um, I don't like to use straight breadcrumbs because I feel like they get too mushy. So I like to use some panko and I also use some whole wheat rice crackers which I will crunch up uh, and mix in. I usually do everything by eye, but today we're going to try to put a measuring cup on it so uh, people that are doing this for the first time can get a sense of how much. What I'll do is I'll make a certain amount of, uh, of the dry mix and then match uh, the amount of uh, chopped clams to that amount of dry mix. Just up and by, by eye, but we'll try to get some measurements on it. Well, I typically just use onions and bacon and a mixture of these three crumbs together plus the clams and the clam juice. Um, but we're going to do a variation with a little bit of um, Portuguese hot s sausage, the chorizo mixed in with a little bit of red pepper and we'll probably do a couple of those with some hot sauce on them as well so giving you a more mild version or a, uh, a little bit more spicier because there's a little bit of spice in the uh, in the sausage and then you get of course a little bit of the red pepper flavor So here's an example of the clams that we dug yesterday. It's probably a little bit more than we will need. We'll use some for our clam fritters that we'll make tomorrow. Um, these are sometimes referred to as chowders because they're good for making clam chowder. We also use them for um, st uh, stuffed clams and for a white clam spaghetti sauce that we make. They can be a little bit hard to open. Some people put them in the freezer to um, get them to open up a little bit, you know, maybe uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes in the freezer. I tend to just use a very thin knife and a pair of gloves so they can get some compression onto the clam. And then uh, I'll cut the closest muscle and then slide it along the front and cut the uh, opposing muscle. And then once you've got it open, it's good to, it's good if you can retain some of that uh, that uh, brine. It's, it's helpful to put that in the mix, adds a lot of flavor. Uh, so then I cut the where it's attached here, the muscles in the clam and then along the bottom. I suggest if you're making uh, stuffed clams it's good to have a lot of these stainless steel bowls. It's good for the dry mix and especially if you're going to do a couple of variations and they're easy to store. You can't have too many of these uh, stainless steel bowls in the kitchen and they take up very little room so highly recommend them. Okay so uh, Nancy's going to dice some onions. Um, dice them pretty small uh, so that you can get a evenly distribute them throughout the, uh, the, the clam, stuffed clam mix. We'll probably use the large one plus half the small one um, and we'll, we'll pan fry that up with the bacon and that'll be part of the dry mix going in. So you want to... Alright, so just gonna go over some basic knife skills um, with chopping onions. So when you chop an onion you um, want to find the root end and then the top end and you're gonna shave off just shave off the roots, but not too much of the root end, so you still have a little anchor here. And we have a little scrap bowl here, which is really handy in the kitchen if um, you use one of your stainless steel bowls there as a scrap bowl. It's easy to collect the scraps. So on the other end, um, we're going to be a little bit more generous with the cut, and we're going to cut off anything excess on the, uh, the top end that we're not going to use. At this point, we're going to cut the onion in half in this direction and we're going to peel off the first outer layer here which goes into the scrap bowl so this gets the skin along with the first tough outer layer and we're going to do about an eighth of an inch dice here and so um, this is the root end that we left a little anchor on so we're going to chop the onion in uh, two different directions we're going to chop it this way and then this way to get a, a, a quick eight inch, eight inch dice. So you want to chop it this way um, only up until that root end. So you're using the root end as an anchor. So make a few slices this way. Being careful not to slice all the way through and being careful not to slice your hand. And then we're going to make a few slices this way. And then the third cut will be 
straight across here to get your perfect little 8 inch dice. Cut the top off to give you a little bit more of a sturdy place to cut from and you're done. We've taken the uh, clamshells that we've opened and put them into a pot. I'm going to bring that to a slow boil just to sanitize the insides and outsides of the shell. When we assemble the stuffed clam mix, we're going to do that uncooked and we'll wrap them in foil and freeze them so that when we uh, we want them, they're, they're not cooked, but we put them in the oven in the foil and then when they're done cooking, we just slightly uh, broil the top just to give it a little bit of crisp under the oven. So we want it, since we're not putting, we're not going to cook these right away, we're going to sanitize these shells and that's what we're doing by heating them in this, this pot of water. Okay, so Nancy has sauteed the onions and fried the bacon. And for the second mix, she's using some of that Portuguese chorizo mixed in with some red pepper. Um, and we're, she's going to saute that, soften up the, the pepper, and uh, heat up the chorizo before we make the separate mix with those, uh, with those items in it. Okay. So here's the um, wheat Ritz crackers, which I'm just breaking them up in the container. Uh, it doesn't have to be too fine, enough, enough to get it so that it disperses pretty well. So there's two, two types we're going to make today. This is with the onions and the bacon, and this has the onions, the chorizo, and the red pepper. I normally just do this by eye, but I'm going to try to get some, some measurements. So this is the ground. Um, Ritz cracker uh, mix. So it's about, so we make about half and half. That's about one cup of that, and approximately a, ca a cup of each. And then with the panko, do about an equal amount of panko. It's a cup of panko. And the bread comes out a little, makes it a little bit denser. So I'll add probably about a cup of those as well. So it's about maybe one third cracker, wheat cracker, one third panko, and one third breadcrumb. And we'll dry mix these. Put in the bacon and the onions. Put these in here. And that's the cherise, pepper, and onions in here. Okay, so now I'm just going to mix, the, evenly disperse the onions, the bacon, in with the crumbs, bread crumbs, panko, and Ritz cracker. And really what's left is to mix in the chopped clams with some um, of the clam juice and sometimes I'll add some white wine if I need to densify it a little bit just to make sure that it's not dry, dry it out. So there's the bowl of clams that we just shucked. Nancy's going to chop these up uh, and then we're going to mix them in with a dry mix and then uh, adjust the moisture so that we can put them in the, the uh, clam shells. So she's dicing these, you know, about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch in size. It's a good size clam right there. <laughs> oh, that guy's huge. <laughs> oh my gosh. We use the entire uh, quahog for the uh, for the mix, and then we'll also add in some of that clam juice that we got out of the out of the clams. So Nancy chopped the clams. Thank you. That was a, a lot of chopping. My pleasure. I'm going to put about a cup in to start, and this is usually done by feel, in terms of how much density you clam and how how moist you want to make the, the material. 
Um, it's pretty close for the amount of clam. I'm going to put was about a cup. I'm going to put maybe another quarter cup in and mix it in. I'm also going to take about a quarter, oh, sorry, a half cup of clam juice just to uh, densify this a little bit and mix this in. So as not to make it overpoweringly salty, I'll also add in a little bit of Chardonnay. Any white wine is probably fine. Um, I tend to stay not too sweet, that's why Chardonnay is good. It's almost like, more like lemony. We will, we will add a little lemon juice as well. So now I've got the clams and the bacon and the onions pretty well distributed. I'm just going to densify a little bit more. A little bit more. From the chef, thank you. Oh, I was asking for more wine for the chef. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were volunteering. <laughs> I'll add a little bit more of the uh, clam juice to that. You can see it's getting pretty, pretty sticky. This will this will be a moist clam when we bake it. So you can see it's pretty well. It's pretty damp right there. Okay, so now I'm going to put the uh, the mix into each clam. I don't know if you can see it on the side. We just pulled out a roast about an hour ago. It's uh, just coming down in temp. Maybe we'll do. Maybe Nancy will do one on on her uh, roast technique as well. So what I do is this: uh, take a spoon and um, you know a slight mound to it. Make sure I, I push it into the shell so you get a good sh a good shell's worth. It's nice to do various sizes. Sometimes people want, you know, a large one followed by a small one. So we had different size clams, which worked out well. So we can make different size. And we'll do this until all of these are, are made. And then we'll show you how we wrap them in foil. Okay, so Nancy has uh, loaded up her shells, a, a nice nice uh, presentation of her red pepper and charisse mixture. Um, I think it's a little over the top there on the butter. I mean, I would probably go with half that on each one. Tell us about your butter philosophy. Hmm. Well, I'm just putting enough on here so that when we... These are, these are going to get frozen uncooked but, and they're going to be in foil when we bake them. At the end, after they're done baking, we're going to put them under the broiler just to give them a little bit of crispiness. And that, and that, what's it, why I put a little bit of butter on there just to, to brown up the uh, the top. We use a heavy duty foil and wrap from above. And we want to get it tight around the shell so you can keep that moisture in. Okay, so uh, one thing to mention is since these are going in the freezer, we always like to put the date that we made them because um, sometimes we have two batches in there at once. And then in this case, she marked the Charisse and red pepper CP, and the others are, are our standard uh, co op, stuff co op. Ta da! Okay, so these were co these are cooked slightly un uh, cooked uh, under the foil for about what? Twenty minutes. About twenty minutes, and at four hundred, and mm -hmm. then the foil removed, and then a slight browning under the broiler. Nancy's gonna try each one. Now, this is the chorizo and red pepper boiling hot. Oh, it smells divine. It's got a lot of flavor. Mmm, yum. And this one is the classic stuffy with bacon and onions. They both have white wine. Mm. How's the salt level? 
Mm, absolutely perfect. All right. Wow. Delicious. It's a wrap. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs>